Welcome everybody. This is the section two of our IBM for Beginners course. And in this section, we will have an overview of the Watson APIs. So what we will learn. First, we will start doing a recap of the REST paradigm. And then we will learn how to call the Watson APIs, which, which are the options that we can integrate into our programs to call the Watson APIs. In the second video, we will do a review of some of the Watson APIs. And we also see some of the demos of the capabilities of Watson. And then in the last part of our video, we will complete the rest of the APIs. So you will have at the end of this section, a big overview of what are the Watson capabilities that you can integrate into your applications to build your next great idea. So let's start with a recap of the REST paradigm. REST at the beginning was an architectural style from transferring information from one application to another application. So uh, the big difference is that it uses standard HTTP operations. So in some way, it used the same technology that you use for viewing web pages. The difference is that it can handle different types of payload. So you can send XML messages or the most popular JSON formats that use the JavaScript object notation. So we will see why REST is so important for this kind of integration. So remember that Watson offers its capabilities to be included in your applications. So in some way, Watson has to expose all its functionality over the internet so you can integrate it in your application. And in this way, REST is the perfect fit because you can call APIs for any programming language. So you are not tired to using only Java, JavaScript, C++, or something else, but you can use any language that can do an HTTP call. The second point of importance is that REST leverages the internet infrastructure. So it takes advantage of the firewalls, the routers, and all the infrastructure that was built for viewing web pages. It's also available to be used in the calling of application programming interfaces, APIs, over the internet. And the third point is that there exists a lot of frameworks with a low footprint. So, uh, for example, you can use some libraries for calling these Watson services from a mobile application or another type of development which requires some lightweight frameworks. If some of you remember the SOAP stack, sometimes you remember a heavyweight and a long jar files, but it's not the same with the REST paradigm and the lightweight protocol that it handles. So uh, in terms of Watson, there exists the Watson Developer Cloud SDK, and you have three different options for integrating the Watson APIs. First, you can code your own low-level functions to do the HTTP call, so you will do the hard work by hand. Um, you can also use Core, and some of you maybe know this program. It uses uh, some simple calls from the terminal window in order to do some basic testing. Or you can use some of the SDK that are written for most popular language. You can find these SDKs in GitHub. Here is the URL. And maybe you will find some Node.js, some Python, some Swift, Java, Unity, .NET, and a lot of other developments that handles all the low-level work for you and let you only concentrate on building your own application. So uh, if you are working with any special programming language, uh, maybe you can take a look at GitHub to see if there is already an SDK for you to not have to write the SDK by hand. So let's do some simple exercise to show how you can call the Watson API. So remember in our previous section, you created your own IBM Cloud account. So let's create simple Watson services for doing language translation. So we will go to the Watson API and then we will select the language translator API. We will give it a name. In Lantran, you can give any name you want. And then we will create the service. 
So once IBM Cloud finished to create this service, it, it will show us the username and password that we have to use for accessing the service over the internet. So let's look at it. So uh, these are the credentials. These are my credentials. You can use your own credentials. So here we have the URL where we call the REST service and then the username and password we have to use in our calls. So let's copy it to our sample call script and then we will do the call. Just here. Okay, we have the call script ready. So uh, call is a simple program for calling URLs over the internet. So in this case, we are saying call to invoke Watson through a POST method. This is a simple HTTP method. It's the same that you can use in the forms in your web pages. And then we will send the JSON payload. The JSON payload contains two parameters, the text that we want to translate and the model ID, the language we want to translate from English to Spanish. And then the URL that you can use for invoking Watson. So let's copy this and let's run through it at terminal window. Here we are. So we will send the call to Watson and Watson is answering. Okay, the response from Watson is an JSON object also, a call translation, and it says that the translation for our sentence was hola este es nuestro primer test de api de watson uh, some of you maybe don't know spanish sorry <laughs> sorry but you can also try with with another language watson handles a lot of language for this this basic example so as you can see uh, we simply use an http call we send a json payload text and model id and then we receive a json payload so it makes very easy to integrate Watson APIs in your in your programs. So maybe some of you are wondering uh, where are the API documents. So returning to our VM Cloud, you will see that you have uh, the the reference. So in the reference, in the API reference, you will have the different methods. So you can say, for example, that if you use the get method. So you will have to send a parameter text and then the, the other different parameters. If we use the translate method, that is with the post, for example, you can see the different parameters that you have to send. And then you have some sample code in Node, in Java, and Python, and so on. So uh, this was a basic sample of the kind of thing you can use for, for calling the Watson APIs. So uh, let's try to, to do some tests. Feel free to explore, to do translation in other languages and so on.